Hello there. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, Nick, why are you throwing things at me? Oh, he's angry. I don't know. Hi, Nick. Hello. Welcome Hello. back to Fan Fights. Ahoy. Uh, I am Tim. That's Nick. I'm sick. I have the sniffles uh, and my hair is just like wet because I'm sweating a lot because I keep getting a fever. Uh, and then there's Nick. Ahoy. Um, you're throwing things. How are you? Uh, yes. And we have a very exciting match. I'm looking forward to this. Tell us about it, Nick. Careful what you wish for, Tim, um, because, you know, uh, usually at the end of matches, we'll be like, who do you want to play next? And people will be like, I want to play this person. I'll be like, well, too bad, because I already scheduled, scheduled you against someone else. But in this case, Jeremy Potters has been asking for this match uh, for a long time. Uh, and the record, everything kind of lines up. Uh, there was some time I was like, you know what? You got Jack. Uh, so Jeremy versus Jack, I think they're evenly matched. Uh, their records are almost uh, the same. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens. I imagine you will have some feelings throughout. Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, I hate Jack Pinchuk with a fiery passion. Um, but he did give us one of the best moments of the year uh, just a short few weeks ago. And so that, that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, also, I was thinking about it before we got started. This is a really close matchup. Like Jack is one of those players who he has an even record. He's seven and seven, but he's had a lot of really good wins uh, in both singles and teams. He's just an all around pretty good fandom fights player. He always stays up with the categories. And so kind of going into it, I was like, oh, Jack probably has the upside. But then I was thinking about it. Jeremy is just one of the sneakiest players in all of trivia. Just challenged at Mayhem uh, a, a little while ago for the Melee belt. Uh, he uh, has played really, really strong in uh, matches with the Pinheads. And in his singles career, he he has a, a one up on Jack above the uh, uh, even record. So I think he's a really, really good player. I think this is a very even matched uh, matchup. I'm excited. Let's go talk to the players in the pro. Make him regret asking for it. Honestly, I'm honored, Jeremy. Hope uh, hope you're not too attached uh, to winning. Uh, I I don't plan to lose today. Uh, may the best man win. I'm very happy to be playing you. That was far too polite. I'm Canadian. I'm Canadian. What do you expect from me? So yeah, instead of playing the better Canadian Cameron Holzman again, this time you're playing. The Canadian who likes House of the Dragon and, and he's a fucking twat, so beat his ass. And, and, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try, but it's great because it's not Cameron Holton. Best thing about Jack, he's not Cameron. Uh, the other thing is he loves hockey so much. Kaiser, do you know where the best hockey team in the world is right now? The USA. Florida. Yeah, it's oh. hilarious. Yeah, cats can't fucking skate. Let's play. Uh, Nick, normally this is the moment where I would ask you what you thought of the promos. Instead, I'm going to tell you what the macaw thought. She sat there and went, what the fuck? <laughs> to all of that. But Nick, did you have something you wanted to add? Yes, as a big sports fan, I would say you deserve the, the penalty for that one in the box with you. Two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Round number one. How's it going to work, Nick? <laughs> Round number one is going to work like this. There's going to be 10 questions. They're all fan of fights. Uh, each player is going to have 15 seconds to write down their answer at the end of 15 seconds. We'll say pens down at which point the players will reveal their answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece. Should any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one, they would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Players, any questions as we get in round number one? Good luck, man. All right. Good luck. First category comes. First question comes in the category of Star Wars. 
In The Last Jedi, who accompanies Finn and Rose to Canto Bight in search of the Master Codebreaker? Uh, I don't think the answer is your mom, but... Uh, so, like I said, I've been sick. I edited 11 matches in the last two days while I was sick. Uh, so, it's weird because, like, we're here at filming these matches. I'm editing matches that were, we're shot, here. like, two months ago we're that are airing in, like, a month. Five. We're here, but we're not here. We're here, but we're not here. Hey, it's well, complicated. Pens down. Let's go to Jack. I said Chewbacca. Let's go to Jeremy. I said BB-8. BB-8 is correct. Uh, so Jeremy will take the one-point lead. Your next question is in the category of criminal underworld. How specifically are Virgil and Turk Mallory related to each other in the Oceans franchise? Malloy? Malloy. I've been re I've been watching too much of the boys. I apologize. Please. Did you finish yet? The... No, we have one episode left in season two. Um, okay. starting... Oh, it's a good episode. Yeah, uh, we've been we've been busy. We've been busy, so we haven't been. That's in... right. No rush. Repeat. Finish season three, and then All right. That is the first repeat for Jack. Your question again: How specifically are Virgil and Turk Malloy related to each other? In the Oceans franchise. Yeah, um, you get through three. Three's really good. And then just maybe take a break. Uh, no, I'm excited to, to watch the new season. I've seen one through three, but Maggie's new to it. And it is fun watching her watch it for the first time. It's a good time. I agree. Five. You're watching my wife watch it? Three. Mm -hmm. I agree. It would be fun. One of Ben's down. Let's go to Jeremy. Half brothers. And Jack. I said they're twins. Twins is correct. Yes. Uh, so Jack ties it up. A little celebratory yes to get it going. Uh, <laughs> Nick, what's next? Next question comes in the category of the MCU. Which MCU film sees an explosion during a United Nations meeting? Have you ever seen an MCU film? No. Makes sense. Nor will I. <laughs> I you're just vehemently against it. Indeed. Although we have had players in fandom fights be vehemently against watching certain categories. So this is Man, I hate horror icons. That's fair. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Jack, let's go to you. Captain America Civil War. And Jeremy. Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War is correct. Two to two. Your next question is in the category of DC. Who plays Detective Tom Lone in Catwoman? A classic. Have you ever seen a Catwoman? <laughs> Oh, so you you don't you don't have fun with the fandom fights, is what you're saying. I'm not fucking playing. Just come back. One more romp at the sack. <laughs> of fandom fights. That's not what we do here. No, but I'm just it's a metaphor. Five, four, three, two, right. one, pens down. Let's go to Jeremy. Benjamin Brett. And Jack. Maggie coming back to fandom is just terrifying. Uh, Benjamin Bratt. Benjamin Bratt is correct. Three to three. Uh, what's next, Nick? Next question comes to the category of the Wizarding World. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, what causes the Hufflepuff Seeker to be removed from the Quidditch match that Harry competes in? Do you think... Well, I guess let me rephrase. If anybody currently playing in fandom fights were to have a list of how many times we've asked about each movie, who do you think that person would be? Javi or Payson for some reason, even though I'm weirdly going on Minchaka. Possibly. I could see him yeah, having I the vibes. Could also see like Brittany or Joe doing something like that. Yeah. Javi Javi's a good call though. Yeah. Five, four. Three. Two. Kaiser One. pens down. <laughs> he just has all the challenges. Uh, let's go to Jack. 
I'm not sure. I said he was uh, injured during a class. And Jeremy. I said they're injured. Uh, both are incorrect. We are looking for they are struck by lightning. Oh, shit. So, um, so we are going to move on to the next question, which is in the category of sci-fi icons. Your question is, other than Marty and Doc Brown, name two people we see time travel in the Back to the Future franchise. Tim, if you had to shout out any, like, six numbers, what would they be? Like, but but not, like, they're because they're not on the ceiling. So if you had to, like, look at, at an email, perhaps, and give me six numbers. Oh. Oh. I think I know where this is going. Okay. What would they be? Uh, they, okay, hang on. Hang on. Five. Oh, God. Four. Yep. Three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jeremy. I can't remember her name. I said Biff and Michelle. And Jack. I couldn't remember her name either. I said Biff and Elaine. Oh, thing correct. We're looking for Biff. Uh, I believe you all were thinking of Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, then we were also would have taken Clara, Jules, or Vern. Yeah, I think Hi, those people with the kids. Uh, so still three to three, Tim. Is that what you have? Yes, that's what I have, Nick. Great. Then your next question will come in the category of DreamWorks. Which DreamWorks film features a villain who has a gang of thugs called the Baker's Dozen? Nick, I would have to say those numbers would have to be one seven one. Yeah. Nine five seven. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, good. So we're on the same page. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, beautiful! Multitasking over here. <laughs> so what are we? What are we talking about? Bacon? I I missed the question. We, we were talking, talking about bacon. We're talking about bacon. We were Five, indeed. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Jack. Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. And Jeremy. I said short third. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish is correct. So yeah. uh, Jack will take the one point lead, four to three. Your next question is in the category of mixed bag. What could it be? Your question is, the films Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Wonder Woman, and 101 Dalmatians all feature what city? This is good mixed bag. This is a good mixed bag. Good mixed bag. Who um, supplied us with this bag that is mixed? Who? Who? One of two people. And not the one that's here. I don't think so, because he does not. Yeah, no, he does not seem to recognize. So. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Jeremy. I said London. And Jack. London. London is correct. Nick, what's next? Your penultimate question comes in the category of epic adventures. And that question is, how many epic adventures films were directed by Gore Verbinski? It's a cool name. Gore. It's, that's kind of weird when you take it away from the last name, if we're going to be honest. Yeah. You think he has a nickname? Like, people call him G or something? Hey, G, what's going on? Gory, go. No, I think he just gets bullied a lot. <laughs> hey, look at Gore. Five, five, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Jack. Three. And Jeremy. Three. Three is correct. I almost gave away the answer during that uh, little ad lib there. Uh, all right. <laughs> Your final question of this round is going to be in the category of Star Trek. What is the first name of Kirk's son who dies in the search for Spock? I was worried there for a second. Were you? They both got it right, right? Uh, yeah, no, I was just worried because I started reading the question. I thought Kirk's son had passed away, but we were just talking about the search for Spock. So. Oh, Jesus. All, all is well. Yes, it is. 
I thought his letterbox finally caught up to him, but good lord, <laughs> these are these are not good, Tim. I don't sign off on these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a good joke. It I'll tell him myself. I don't care. Five, four. I, I, my, my hands are clean. <laughs> I think he watches the videos too. So uh, let's go to Jeremy, David, and Jack. David. David is correct. So we got a final score of this round seven to six. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. All right. Let's get into round number two. How's it going to work? Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel with eight fandom categories on it, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. Each player will get a spin at the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. You'll get five questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece. Unless you'd like to check down the multiple choice, at which point it'll only be worth one and be on the lookout as stealing is available. Round number two, Tim, what's on the wheel today? On the wheel today, we got Disney Animation, The Wizarding World, YA, Star Trek, Criminal Underworld, Marvel, Mixed Bag, and Sci-Fi Icons. Jack, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer? This is a great wheel for me. I think we should just go for it. Let's do it. We'll spin first. All right. This is your first spin. So woke, huh? Yeah, we 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 that's been revealed now, so we might as well just talk about it here. <laughs> <laughs> Your category you land on is YA. I think I keep this. Uh, repeat some multiples if you need them. Keep going, Jack. Great, great play so far. Thank you. Uh yeah. <laughs> that was fun. That was good. That was good, Joe. Uh all right, Nick, would you go ahead and give uh Jack his questions in the category of YA? Gladly, Jack, I'll be giving you your questions in the category of YA. Are you prepared for them? Please just no divergent questions. Probably maybe. Your first question. Probably gonna be one. But... Which YA film features a character going for a motorcycle ride with a stranger? New Moon. That is correct for two points. Your second question. Who plays Emmett Cullen in the Twilight Saga? Oh shit. I'll go multiple. All right, your multiple choice options are is it A, Jason Ritter, B, Christopher Mintz Plass, C, Kellen Lutz, or D, Alexander Ludwig? C. C is correct for one point, and I imagine Kaiser's giggling at the thought of Christopher Mintz Plass playing uh, <laughs> Cullen. But uh, we'll move to your third question, Jack. In the Hunger Games Catching Fire, who tries to deactivate the force field and gets electrocuted moments before Katniss does it? Beatty. That is correct for two points. Jack, your penultimate question. In Divergent, during her aptitude test, Triss has a vision of pedestals with two types of object objects on them. Knives and what? No, multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are is it A, guns, B, meat, C, rope, or D, water? Two. Meat? That is correct for one point. Okay. All right, and Jack, your final question in YA. In the death cure, in what part of his body does Thomas get shot by Jansen? Leg. That is incorrect, Jeremy. Chance for the two-point steal. Stomach. One more time. Stomach. That is correct for a two-point steal. Hmm. All, right. All right. So at the end of Jack's spin, he gets his total up to 13, but with the steal, Jeremy's at eight. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. All right. We will bring back the wheel, and we are going to bring in Kaiser. This is going to be the nice steal for Jeremy. It lands on sci-fi icons. Ooh. So there's a lot of movies here. What do you feel about it? I mean, it's okay. The one I really, really didn't want, he just got rid of for me. So I feel like I can spin again and probably be okay. I'll say spin again because this category is like it's a very, very broad. So I'll say spin again. Yeah. Yeah, Transformers suck. Let's spin again. Hey. Okay. All right. This is what you're going to be stuck with. Lands on Star Trek. Okay. Nick must yep. be pleased. 
Uh, all right, Jeremy. I'll be giving you your questions in the category of Star Trek. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, your first question. Which Star Trek film features a funeral where the coffin gets shot into space? Wrath of Khan. That is correct for two points. Your second question. Which Star Trek actor said the quote, second star to the right and straight on till morning? William Shatner. That is correct for two points. Your third question. In Star Trek Generations, what does Worf have to retrieve out on the end of the plank of the ship during his promotion ceremony? Hat. That is correct for two points. And the lead... Your penultimate question. Who is the only character that has dated Nyota Uhura in a Star Trek film? Spock. Sorry, one more time. Spock. That is correct for two points. I believe you knew it. I didn't hear you say it. So, uh, all right. And yeah. your um, uh, oh, oh, Joe. okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys. Was it Joe being brought in? It's it's Joey Joe. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Star Trek Five: Final Frontier. Scotty mentions going for dinner with Uhura. I mean, sure. I'm willing to. I'm willing to. The question is invalid because Spock is not the only character. Scotty is dating her in Final Frontier. I'm willing to take away those two points from him. So yeah, (laughs) we'll do that. You're challenging. We're we're challenging. All right. We'll be right back after this challenge. All right, we are back from the challenge. Uh, yep, Joe is 100% right. So uh, Jeremy uh, will not get those two points. We are going to give Jeremy, a, the question is thrown out, and we are going to get uh, Jeremy a new question. Uh, so the score is now 14 to 13. Is that what you have, Nick? Yep. Okay. Yes, so uh, Jeremy, your next question in Star Trek. In Star Trek Insurrection, Anish tells Picard that even though she has been alive for hundreds of years, she has still never learned how to do what? I don't think this is a similar question at all. Uh, Whistle. That is incorrect. Jack, chance for a two-point steal. Swim. That is correct for two points. Nah, that's it. Data wants to whistle. Yeah. And that's because your similar question is coming up right now, Jeremy. Ah, uh, you uh, got me. Question. Which Star Trek character has posed as a professor and resigned from their post? Bones. That is incorrect. Jack Chance for a two-point steal. Kirk. That's also incorrect. We were looking for Scotty. Oh, right. Uh, so, I had the right scene. Wrong guy. Correct. Uh, so at the end of uh, round number two, with that steal in there, Jack gets his total up to 15, but Jeremy is behind one with 14. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. All right. So let's get into round number three. It's the betting round. How's it going to work? Round number three is going to work like this. It is the betting round. We have five more questions in the realm of fandom fights. Once the players hear the category, they can pick anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we've reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number three? Cool. Go, Tim. All right. Your first category you can bet points on is Marvel. Let's get bets starting with Jeremy. Two. And Jack. One. All right, your question in the category of Marvel. 
Who plays Abigail Whistler in Blade Trinity? This movie stoinks. I I didn't know Jeremy was going to say whistling for the question, so I just want him to know this was not a shot. Oh, yikes. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Five. Four. I mean... Three. It's a blade training question, so it's kind of a shot no matter what. Hands down. Let's go to Jeremy. Uh, Jessica Beale. And Jack. Yeah, I didn't get my wrong answer down in time. Uh, Jessica Beale is correct. So Jeremy will gain two points, go up to 16. Jack will lose one point, go down to 14. It is a two point game. Nick, what's the next category? Next category you can get points on is Disney Animation. Let's get bets, starting with Jack. Two. And Jeremy. Two. All right. What's the uh, question, Nick? Question is, what is the name of Cinderella's evil stepmother in Cinderella? Ella. 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 A. 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 I don't think that's how it goes, but... It is. Under my Cinderella. <laughs> Yikes. Bucky, what'd you do? Bucky sucks. Four, always doing shit. Three, two, one, pens down. Let's go to Jack. Lady Tremaine. And uh, Jeremy. Lady Tremaine. Lady Tremaine is correct. 18 to 16. Your next category you can bet points on is Pixar. All right. Let's get bets starting with uh, Jeremy. Zero. Okay. And Jack. Two. Okay. Your question in the category of Pixar. In Toy Story... Sid wins Buzz and Woody from what game? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Jeremy, who bet zero. I said the claw machine. And Jack. I also said the claw machine, machine in parentheses. The claw is correct. So we are all tied up. 18 all. And your next category is coming from Nick. Criminal Underworld. All right, let's get bets, starting with Jack. Two. And Jeremy. Two. All right, Nick, what's the question? Your question is, which criminal underworld film features a scene where a character dances through a grid of lasers? <clears throat> I, get, I like lasers. Pretty cool. Do you even own a laser? No fake fan yeah that's fair you know who's a fake fan maggie oh i love fandom fights i love it so much Ooh. she does say that all the time i literally every time we get on call she's like oh i miss it so much fandom Ooh. I, know. Call. I don't mean any offense please don't come back <laughs> I, most of us that, would that will make her come back more than anything honestly Five. Four, Shit. three. Repeat, please. All right, that is the first repeat for Jeremy. Question again. Which Criminal Underworld film features a scene where a character dances through a grid of lasers? She's literally spelling out the answer to this question right now. What if, because last time it worked when we said she was going to play Coho. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. You said you were done, and then we were like, you're playing Coho, and then you were like, oh, I want to beat that fucker's ass. So which fucker's ass would you like to beat, Maggie? Because yeah, who do you want to beat up? 
we'll bring you back. You can beat them up. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Jack. Ocean's 12. And Jeremy. Said Ocean's 8. And your winner, Jack Pinchuk. Ocean's 12 is the correct answer. Nick, thoughts on the match? Great match. Great back and forth. Um, in all rounds, in round one, uh, Jeremy had the lead for a minute, and J Jack took it. Uh, round two didn't go... It was going well for both players, and at the end of both of their rounds, things flipped. Uh, a good challenge in there, really swung the score back. Uh, and then round three, someone's in the lead. A quick flip there, a quick flip here, snip, snip here, yada, yada, yada. Uh, great match uh, overall. I, I thought it was Wizard of Oz, but anyway. Um, Jeremy has to unfortunately add someone besides Cameron Holtzman uh, to his list of people he has lost to. But uh, good for Jack. Jack's better than a 500 player. Uh, so I'm always happy to see him uh, get get back there. But if you lose to a Canadian, have you really lost at all? Or maybe it stings more. Well, Brittany's from Canada. I like Brittany, though. Post-match interviews. Let's go. Jeremy Potter's well-fought match. Very, very good <laughs> match, like, back and forth. Like, one of the better matches for no stakes, often, like, match of the year's uh, usually, like title matches that kind of do this, or contender matches that do this, uh, get get recognized. But if there was just like a look at all the matches without what the stakes were, because the winner of you and Jack just goes on to play uh, another match next year. But um, looking at just the matches was fantastic. You were winning, and Jack was winning. Then Jack looks like he's about to sweep his category. You get a, a quick steal. You hit something you like. You're about to sweep. Then he gets a steal. Like, I couldn't have written it better myself. Uh, at the end of the day, you did come up on the losing side of it. Uh, but thoughts on the match? I, it's the first time this year Criminal Underworld's let me down in any way. I missed both questions, and that's weird. And it's just what it is. I had Ocean's 12 in my brain, but I just couldn't remember the scene. And I, I don't know. But good, good game to Jack. You know, like they say, be careful what you wish for. But True. I. I don't feel like I could have done anything else except take a second extra maybe on my last Star Trek question and mm. think about it a little bit longer. But other than that, Kaiser is a great manager, you know, so it's, it's a good Jamie, time. I, I tried about, okay, Jamie, I'll never fault you for, you know, Vincent Castle dancing to a terrible song if you purge it from your, from your brain that it's oh, completely cool. fine. That's why I couldn't think of it. It was the, the stupid Fox guy. Yeah. 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 But I think... I think this match was lost on like very fine margins because I feel that for both of the track questions that a Jeremy missed, if he had taken like a few seconds longer, he probably would have gotten it. Especially that like, he knew he knew about the transparent uh, aluminum scene in the Voyage Home. So he knows he knows the movie is very well. Just like, just like a slip here and there. And and then it's fine. Like Jeremy is a player that I think have improved a lot from when he, he started and that isn't talked about enough. I think next year he'll 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 come back and then assuming this is his uh, his last match of the year and I think he he can surprise some some people. Absolutely, Jeremy. We we will likely see you around in teams before year's end. But any other Canadians you want to call out? Dylan's is, is, Dean Manners. He's also Canadian. I say yeah. Is Dean Canadian? I'll play Dean. That's fine. Okay. He's nice. Didn't know that, but great. Uh, Jeremy, congratulations on a match well played, and uh, we will see you Thank next you. time. Jack Pinchuk, uh, a nail biter, a uh, bit of a. I imagine you your stress levels. I don't know if you have an Apple Watch or anything like that, but if you're tracking your stress level, yeah, me neither. But uh, I hear about them all the time. Apparently, your, your monitors your heart rate. Yeah, J Joe, you're probably rose a little bit, but not as much as Jack's. Um, Jack, great match. Uh, there were points in just about every round where it looked like Jeremy had your number and you could have given up, but you didn't, uh, and you came back. So. Uh, ultimately, that's what it takes to win. I think you and Jeremy match up pretty well against each other in terms of knowledge. And often in matches like that, it just depends on who slips up. Jeremy rushes the Star Trek question, you get a key steal. Um, whether it's like Joe and Brittany playing each other or, or Jack and Jeremy, like I think when two very evenly matched players play each other, it can just come down to 
who keeps their head when the other one makes a slight mistake. And I think you did that today. So congratulations on the win. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, yeah, no, I tried. I try my best to learn from my mistakes. I, 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 I missed a, I missed a, uh, a question I should have hit in my match against Alex fucking plutonium. Uh, and I, I got in my head for the rest of the match and it, it was, it was rough, but this one, I, after missing that, uh, that, that YA question, I didn't let it get to me. And, uh, yeah, no. And even in round three, there were a couple of times when, uh, I was like, yeah, no, I'm done. Uh, Jeremy's going to win this when I was down, uh, after that first question, but no, uh, Joe is, uh, Joe and the rest of the, the gang have been great. Uh, just uh making me uh feel feel better about myself my knowledge and everything They're, they've been an incredible help to me uh i wouldn't be the player i am today without them and i'm jeremy you played a great match today i was my palms were sweating the whole time it was i i was not uh, I, I was very stressed for most of that match uh no that <clears throat> This was a this was a great match. Uh, I think we play another day. Jeremy gets the win. Uh, it just uh, ha the, luck was on my side today, so I'm happy. I I can't wait to play again soon this year. Uh, hopefully, yeah. No, I'm I'm just really happy. Yeah, Joe Jack has always struck me as someone who's hovering around a 500 record but has the ability to, to take off from that at any point, uh, like has the ability to make a run, like a serious run at any point. Is this the first step uh, in that run for Jack? I hope so. I certainly hope so. I think he played a great, a great match all the way through round one, seven points is great. That's sort of way the league you sort of want to start aiming for round two. I thought he did really good in YA smartly multiple choice when he needed to accept that last question. He, I think, it just rushed into that last one. There's the one thing, the 15 seconds and a multiple. I think you're all right. And then, yeah, didn't lose his call, got to Star Trek, got that steal back, took those two points back from Jeremy. And then round three, it was a little bit about just making up that gap. And we got to that Pixar question. It's like, one, should I do one? I, we went, and he, I said, I think you should go to two. And thankfully, he agreed. And like I said, got that Toy Story one. And that's when we tie the game. And yeah, great. Last one in Criminal Underworlds. Like Jeremy said, it's something that's not let him down for a while, and it's a risk. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought Jack played a really good game, and I think his accuracy was pretty damn good, too. Uh, Jack, I likely won't let you play whoever you want, as I did for Jeremy, because now that you've won, I, I have an idea of who you'll be playing next. But maybe you can guess. Who do you think Slash wants to play uh, next? Well... Just looking at the uh, the stats here, uh, the outdated stats. I, I I'm probably up against someone like Igor or uh, someone around Jeremy's level here. Uh, uh, fuck no, I don't want to play any of those people. No, uh, <laughs> give me give give me someone else. Give give me hey, anyone. Jack, give me anyone. You do, you do want to play those people. You do yeah, want to play those people. To play. Because that's how you. That's how you win. Absolutely no. This is. Uh, uh, whoever you whoever you throw me up against, I'll uh, I'll do my best, put the work in, and uh, and hopefully I'll win. Sounds like a plan, Jack. Congratulations on the win today, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Can I play, Jack? Maybe not in singles, but like because I'm not playing in singles. But maybe our teams could play or something. Is that a possibility? That's going to do it for us today at Fandom Fights. Thank you to Kaiser and Jeremy. Thank you to Jack and Joe. Thank you to Nick for writing. I have been Tim. We'll see you guys next time with another great Fandom Fights match. Until then, have a good night. We'll see you next time. Bye.